Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I have never seen it rain the way it is raining. It is still raining here, and we're, we're supposed to have our opening day of baseball season this week for my um, seven-year-old. I don't even think, even if it even if it's dry tomorrow and the next day, I, I don't think there's enough time for the fields to dry. I think we're going to have to postpone opening day, but that's okay because I have things to talk about about Ripple and XRP. Baseball is not un, is not important right now. The year of the digital asset is what's important. Now, yesterday I believe I touched on what I, what is one of the more important aspects of everything we've talked about with Ripple and XRP, and that is that I believe that Ripple um, was either commissioned from the start by the federal government, uh, in, in addition to um, bigger people even on the world stage or I, what I'm saying is the federal government in conjunction with Europe and different parts of the world maybe Japan too I believe it, it was either commissioned from the start or it was commissioned starting in 2014 to 15 once they realized well probably 2013 2014 once they realized what ripple had it's one of those two things today at the end of this video I'm going to take you further up the ladder of the heights of power that I am talking about. But the, I'll start you um, when we get there with the video from yesterday. We, I, I want to hammer home to you what Greg Kidd talked about, about how they first met with the Treasury. All right, but first I wanted to cover a few pieces of news that I've kind of have that are important pieces of news that I feel like need to be covered. Um, and, and first, I like to show you the Joker. He's the, um, this is a totally separate thing. What you see on coin market cap and all of that, that is really the distraction of speculation. But in the short term, for those of you that care about that stuff, um, it's it's interesting for, to look at this every once in a while. And Joker is one of the traders that I actually look at. Um, XRP, the flat bottom pattern broke out and confirmed on the fourth chart. Long trade with TP, 29 cents to 32 cents. SL none by the dip, but but a daily close below 22 cents is fine. Now this is just trading charting type stuff, but I don't really. This is not really my bag. I'm more I'm more looking at this from the from the perspective of a long term big picture. I think the long term is getting shorter and shorter as far as the window of when this all happens. I believe 2020 is a is a crucial year, but I believe the window of what's happening is going to happen between 2020 and 2025 but i think that that a lot of the people are going to start piling in once they realize what you and i know so let's go let's get going through this news so i can get to the meat the first two things remember we showed the greg kid video from yesterday well Stuart xrp has been at work and he has delivered up a couple of other important ones i, I want to make sure i let i don't care how long these videos have to be I want you to all understand the foundation and what you are truly a part of. It is much bigger than anything you see on coin market cap. It is much bigger than just some startup company out of San Francisco. This is a liter this is we're talking about a global reset, talking about a fourth industrial revolution. And at the end by the end of this video, you'll see just how big all of this is. It's not this is not just some Mickey Mouse company that a couple of guys that just got together and said, hey, we'll, we'll create this digital asset. And all. No, this is far larger than that. Uh, you and I, if we got together and created the exact same tech that the guys at Ripple did, we never would have been able to take it to the places that they are taking it and the places this is going. It wouldn't have happened. Listen to Greg Kidd here. Yeah, from the Fed, from the payments group, Bitcoin has been a little bit troubled in terms of serving as a high volume payment protocol. And so part of my association now with Ripple, which works with Bitcoin, is to try to find a version of a virtual currency that can do clearing and settlement in real time, whereas the, the Bitcoin blockchain takes quite a bit of time to clear. So one of the things I'm searching for in terms of investments and involvement is virtual currencies that 
ser serve not just as a great store of value and something that solves the double spend problem, which Bitcoin has obviously done and knocked it out of the park on, but I'm beginning to look at what might actually be a solution that actually works as a backbone for a global payment system as well as just being a store of value. Chinese volume, that's really, um, even on the Ripple network, the Chinese volume is, uh, is first uh, in terms of the Chinese currency at 75 basis points. And uh, that's, sort of the, that's sort of the starting range of getting in. And so merchants are looking at that to something higher, and that's just right off the top. And so the digital currencies have the potential to be basically interchange free. Um, and so it's a huge economic advantage, and they also have the potential to settle immediately or almost immediately. Speculators are having a field day with the, with the currency. It, it is digital gold. But if that's a great opportunity, a 10x opportunity from, from where we sit is to move into the payment space. Because like right now, nobody can whip out a debit card and go and buy a loaf of bread with your Bitcoin or XRP. But I believe within the next six months, that's going to be possible. And so when digital currency enters the mainstream, as opposed to being sort of an esoteric trading opportunity, then we really are in a situation where legacy financial payment rails haven't had a real competitor in 40 years. The concept that basic functions of buying and selling goods, not just on the internet, but at the corner shop, could be done in digital currencies instantly at a lower cost and simpler is, is a real race. It's the first real race we've had in financial services in my life. You, I come so Basically, he in there he said that that look when you start crossing and this is remember this is 2013. I don't think he had any idea how far this whole ripple thing was going to go at the time. But he said it would be and and he's talking right there and he's talking in the middle of a bit of a crypto boom back then because I was there. Now, um, so against that context, he says that in the payment space. This would be a 10 times to that market. Well, I think that if he if he really knew then what we know now, that he would say more like it would be a hundred times or a thousand times what was going on. Um, okay, so next, um, this is also Greg Kidd. This is him, him from October 10th, 2019. Ripple is really meant for transactions, not store of value, but transactions. It has a higher throughput than Ether and Bitcoin, it's not as high as, say, Visa, but it's in between. And so it's meant for transactions. By the way, it, now it is as high as Visa or higher. Well, valuation is done on top of what is considered the XRP in circulation as opposed to the XRP in the ball. End of the day, sometimes the total float of Ripple is worth more than Ether. It's happened for two periods of time in the last two years. And sometimes Ether's more than, than Ripple. So. Um, all I know is that if I have quite a bit of either one of those three, I'm kind of in the money. That crypto made it out of the crib in the U.S. Not all crypto, but a company like Coinbase or Ripple, the first is which I invested, the second where I was the chief risk officer, showed that they could be compliant enough to not get shut down right out of the box. And so it's finding that balance between being Disruptive, but not too disruptive. Science. So Ripple was progress from Bitcoin, which was a ledger that was all in Bitcoin and couldn't handle any other form of value or any other issuer. Right. So Ripple took a big stride forward on distributed ledgers by adding two columns to the spreadsheet. The concept of other currencies, including fiat currencies, in addition to its own, plus different issuers. Now, it didn't try to tackle the identity problem, and that's part of the reason I personally think that it's having some problem with traction. It hopes that banks will solve the identity problem. They'll just provide the ledger technology. But, you know, banks haven't had, like if I have a checklist of major innovations or progress that banks have made in the last decade, it's a pretty empty list. So if you're going to wait for the banks to figure out how to make distributed ledger technology work in a compliant way, you could be waiting for a while. Ripple, they actually had a concept of identity which is not about who you are, but what you have. And in this case, identity, it was enough that you had the private key to unlock a public address. That's kind of a Mad Max kind of identity. Okay, 
So um, he's he gives you a little bit of little bit of background there on on what's going on Ripple versus Bitcoin and all that. Let's get through some of this news and then I'll get to the really fascinating part of of <laughs> what you're really a part of. Uh, Michelle Vandenberg um, sent me this. Now this is from Cryptopolis. Cryptopolis is is calling what's going on in the economy. And by the way, the Dow is down 816 points right now. Cryptopolis is calling this the 1929-1932 playbook. Um, still in effect, stock markets are are consolidate are in consolidation. Yesterday's 1,000 plus point rise is just volatility. Volatility leads to more declines. Dow futures at 5.53. Um, he's showing it here, um, but Cryptopolis uh, sees this thing going on. Is for, is what I'm getting out of that. Now this guy, by the way, he's got. I think 30 plus years of trading experience. Very smart guy. I've met him in person. Um, and here's Cryptopolis again in a dramatic turnaround. South Korea. Now, folks, I told, I've been telling you this for over a year and a half. You've, we've seen all these articles about, oh, so such and such country is going to ban cryptocurrencies. This country, we've seen China, Russia, South Korea, um, what else? India, all of these countries. Oh, they could ban crypto and then the market would tank. And every time it happened, I told you, they're not banning anything. They're either manipulating prices or they're, they would love to be able to ban this stuff, but they can't. And ultimately, they're not going to. So that's where we're arriving now, folks. So pay close attention. Um, this is South Korea. They have voted for the country's first crypto specific legislation in the past few hours. Cryptocurrency has been officially classified as an asset class by the institutions. Why now? Exactly. Why now? Well, this is a good follow up. In 2017, the XRP price spiked, which spiked to an all time high of like $303.84 or something like that in South Korea. Price spike was partially due to South Korea market before coin market cap pulled the plug on them. Now cryptos are finally legal in South Korea. Um, so you, you've got it legal in South Korea. Follow me here. Um, and I wanted to mention this for what it's worth. The crypto utility guy sent me this Sologenic. Um, they, they issued their Solo token, which I do not own any of. And they're not paying me to say, talk about this. Um, uh, at a time tweet, the future of tokenizing stocks and other assets is here. The Ethereum of stocks is here. Um, I, I, I think that this is a, what they're doing is very interesting. I wanted to show you if you want to follow the so uh, I'm glad this is going well for them so so far. They came out at 25 cents. It's at 30 cents now. Um, and they're on live coin watch. You might be able to hear that rain. It is pouring. It poured all night and it thundered like I've never heard before last night. Okay, but so look, I'm glad to see that these guys um, are doing well so far. Um, I can't buy this in the United States. You're not allowed to buy this in the United States and Canada. You can go to um, Sologenic.com, I believe, if you want to check out where it is, um, where you are able to buy it. Okay, and um, then we've got this from XRP Crypto Wolf. India's Supreme Court strikes down India's central bank ban against cryptocurrency. The Supreme Court ruling is a huge win for crypto investors and businesses since it used to be hard for 1.4 billion Indian citizens to buy and sell. And then there's this from Michael at VAL5 link. Following the Supreme Court's ruling to abolish the RBI ban imposed on cryptocurrencies, Indian exchanges are preparing for a massive spike in trading as the country finally opens its doors to the billion dollar market. The, you, South Korea, India, folks, do you see where this is all going? I get the feeling that all the regulations are about to be in place and it is on like Donkey Kong when this all happens, folks. All right. Um, and then from XRP Crypto, we'll, a wolf. Um, U.S. State Representative Dennis Powers introduced a new crypto bill to Tennessee's state legislature, urging them to study and use blockchain. The crypto bill mentions current use cases like cross-border payments, asset settlements, and identity verification. So these guys are all getting in a row. Then there was this from XRP Crypto Wolf. Um, apparently, um, I believe this was yesterday or the day before, an interview article about Ripple was published in today's. This is um. Apparently, this is um, Nikkei Asian Review, which is similar to Japan's Wall Street Journal. And it has, I believe that's Emi Yosh Yoshikawa. I she's the um, Ripple representative in Japan. And um, 
I met her actually at Swell. She's a very, very nice person. Uh, Ripple overview, internet of value, international remittances, activities for the ecosystem, Spring and Ubri, RippleNet features, especially on-demand liquidity, ODL and XRP. So she was featured and Ripple was re featured and XRP was featured in this, their version of the Wall Street Journal. That is big time. Okay, Firepower at Firepower FP sent me this. Now, this is where this starts to get interesting, folks. I want to show you this because now we're going to go down a path and I'm going to lead you down the path of just what you're a part of and why. Look at your coin market cap list. Everything on that list is a complete joke compared to what you're a part of if you're holding XRP. And you're about to really, I'm going to really take you up the, the, the power, um, the, all the, the, the areas of power, not just in the United States, but across the world that this company has plugged themselves into. First, from Blockfolio breaking, the Bank of England governor designate. Now remember, it was Mark Carney, and then he went off. I can't remember where he went, but anyway. Andrew Bailey is the Bank of, Eng Bank of England governor desig de designate. Um, Andrew Bailey says, those holding Bitcoin should be prepared to lose all your money, and Bitcoin has not caught on much. Listen to this. You can barely hear it. The sound's terrible on this. I'll turn it up as loud as I can. Sort of so-called crypto assets of the Bitcoin variety. Now, they are in no sense. There's no guarantee of the value of Bitcoin. I've said publicly because you know, we were concerned about it. I'd like to actually think it was quite a good example of the FCA acting promptly. If you want to buy Bitcoin, be prepared to lose all your money. Sorry, my headphones disconnected. So here we go again. One part is where this whole debate started, with, which is sort of so-called crypto assets of the Bitcoin variety. Now, they are in no sense, there's no guarantee of the value of Bitcoin. I've said publicly, because you know, we were concerned about it, I'd like to actually think it was quite a good example of the FCA acting promptly. If you want to buy Bitcoin, be prepared to lose all your money. <laughs> yeah. um, if you want to buy it, fine, but you know, un understand what you've got. It has no intrinsic value. It may have extrinsic value, but it has no intrinsic value. That's one thing. The debate's really, and, and, and it, you know, might, might say it hasn't caught on much as when it, people sort of predict it would in a sort of slightly early, early. Okay, so he's basically saying Bitcoin, it, it, it's, yeah, store value, but, but it, it's not really, you know, in so many words, he's saying it's not, all, all you're doing is put your, putting your money in something that's not going to do anything. It's, it's either a store of value, either that marketing campaign is successful or it's not, and you could lose all your money if it's not. That's the gist of what he's saying. Well, who is this guy? This is this Andrew Bailey. Let's look at, let's look at who he is. Um, Stuart XRP says, Andrew Bailey, the chief executive uh, of FCA will be the new governor of the Bank of England. So FCA, that's the same organization that Brad Garlinghouse said, it's, cl uh, it's clear XRP is not a security and the UK and others have said as much. From the FCA, UK Financial Conduct Authority provides a role model for digital asset regulation. We see firms using cryptocurrency for international money remittance, lowering the cost and time of sending money overseas. So there are legitimate and, and economically significant use cases that's from the FCA that he ran. And I think they literally weighed in on, on XRP and said it's not a, not a security as well. So you see how this works? Um, the Bank of England was a customer prior to his coming to the Bank of England. Mark Carney, what what they were a they were and are a customer of Ripple. This guy then is sent to the Bank of England from the FCA, where he declared that XRP is not a security. Um, and then you've got this from Tony Valentino, folks. You can't make this stuff up. I wish I could, but I literally find my plate myself here in a place in my life where I'm literally saying to myself. Was, is this the reason I was put on this planet? I mean, I li I've told you the story of how um, I was up, you know, I was a Morgan Stanley financial advisor and trained up in uh, in New York and and almost was a part of, of what happened with those trade centers. And I, I've told that story and I, and I told the story of how my father, the official father of the Digital Asset Investor Channel said to me, you could have been killed in that. And he said, he said, well, you were meant for something. Well, there are times when I'm sitting here doing these videos and literally wonder 
I was put on this planet to make you all aware of this because it this is this is a once in in three or four lifetimes that this is going to happen. It won't happen again. I mean, this is cra this is so crazy what we're a part of, and it blows my mind every day. It's what keeps me excited. It makes me want to get up in the morning and talk to you about this because it's so in your face at this point that that it excites me just every day to talk about it. So from Tony Valentina, the Bank of England is a paying customer of Ripple. Okay, we knew that. XRP will be the new world currency, and he has some language every once in a while, and there's not anything anybody can do about it. This deal was technically completed when Bitcoin and blockchain was born. New world order. We've heard Brad Garlinghouse use that phrase more than once, two or three or four times. New world order work on XRP began after Bilderberg meeting in 2014. Don't forget this right here. And this guy says things every once in a while that I'm like, man, does this guy know something? Uh, New World Order work on XRP began after the Bilderberg meeting in 2014. All right, strap in, folks. Here we go. Um, so, okay, so so yesterday I was talking about this, and I'm going to play this again for you because it's that important. Remember, and this is according to Greg Kidd, who was one of the initial guys in XRP, in Ripple. All right. And I'm not going to play the whole thing, but just to the part where he tells you that they went straight to the treasury. And, and this could be interpreted many ways. And like I've said, like I said at the beginning of this video, I believe Ripple was either commissioned by the feds from the very start. I think there's a very good chance it was from the very start. Or the, they made the feds aware of what they were working on. And then I think I personally think it's more likely that the feds were involved in the in the literal creation of Ripple. But he says they went to them once they realized what they had. So listen to this. We kind of take that for granted. That's the way Airbnb got started and Uber. They weren't in, at that time, regulated industries. But generally, yeah. things in financial services, you got to be regulated. So when I came to Ripple, that was a new blockchain. That was the second thing after Bitcoin. The first month, we went to Treasury to explain what we were doing. So yeah. we didn't operate under the illusion that we would never be re regulated and we would never have to ask permission. So it's finding that balance between doing something that's really innovative. But if you want to go mainstream and you're successful, you're going to run up against rules and regulations, guys with guns and badges. Yeah. Guys with guns and badges. Remember what, remember what, um, and this, he just encapsulated the reason that I chose XRP in 2013. You're going to run up against guys with guns and badges. If this was going to happen, it was not going to happen. It's like Brad Garlinghouse says all the time. It's it's going to happen from within. It's not going to happen by some revolution in Bitcoin. That's not the way the world works. That's what I've been saying ever since then. This was going. That's what I saw in Ripple. I said these guys are connected. This has a chance. If if, if anything is kept around and made legal, it will be XRP. It won't be Bitcoin. All right. So, um, and, and, and the other thing Brad Garlinghouse says is, is you, you start, and I made this point yesterday too, they're not going to let Ripple have a monopoly on money. So XRP, uh, I believe, will be pre-allocated or earmarked to banks, governments. Um, I think that's a part of all of this because as Brad Garlinghouse said, you're, the, before governments let you replace their currency, like have a revolution with a Bitcoin, they're going to bring out the tanks. Well, what if you were the one company that was that was cozy, cozied up to the government either before, after, or during this whole run up in technology? Well, I believe Ripple's the one. I believe Ripple is the chosen one. I believe XRP is the one. It's the greatest digital asset ever created. But here we go. We're going deeper into this. All right. So um, then you've got this from Notorious XRP. And I'm showing this for some of you that don't know. You Just turn your common sense thinking caps on. And I'm just going to let you make your own conclusions about this. But this is David Schwartz, the creator, one of the creators of XRP on stage. Listen to what he says. January, uh, I don't know, this may be an older video, but he posted it on January 26, 2020. Say to crypto assets and then to Ripple. Um, I guess I discovered Bitcoin in 2011 
I had been working on um, cryptography for secure messaging, cloud storage for customers like the NSA and you know, various governments and military organizations. And when I first saw Bitcoin, it was one of those things where I, I, you could almost call it love at first sight. Like I saw the technology and I thought, wow, you know, there's, really, there's really something here. And I wanted to learn everything I possibly could about it. And I, I found out, I found the communities and I looked at the source code. And I happen to be a little bit lucky that there was a problem at the time. This was just around the rise of mining pools. That's pretty. That's a pretty dramatic ending to that video. I didn't even watch to that part when I first looked at this, but. I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions. So the first thing we have, um, first thing we know is that Ripple went straight to the treasury. Now, it was either born, the, the this Ripple was either born of the federal government or the government, these governments of the world, or um, it, now you know, <laughs> look, now you know the NSA, uh, David Schwartz worked for, he said he contracted for the NSA, but you know the NSA is in the mix. So let's keep going. Um, and now I always thought it was weird. How, how's Brad Garlinghouse on stage with the freaking IMF? I mean, this wasn't the first time he's been on stage. This was the, uh, I think the deputy counsel to the IMF, Ross Lecklow, I think was his name. I, I remember two things out of this. First of all, I'm sitting there thinking, how's Brad Garlinghouse keep getting in the room with the IMF? And the second thing I'm like, He's, he seems awfully comfortable on stage putting this guy, who's a very important guy with the IMF, uh, putting this guy on the spot about this. Allow for uh, crypto assets uh, custody in their accounts. All right, with that, we'll turn it over to questions. And I see a bunch of questions on this screen, which I can't really read from here, but we're supposed to pick some. Uh, can you see those? Oh, there's two votes. Let me try. Do you see <laughs> IMF holding crypto assets in the future? Oh, sh They're over here, that's easier. You want to take one? Go for it. The first one's for you. IMF. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the yeah, IMF is going to uh, do. Uh, I think we uh, stunned uh, Ross into silence with that one. For that to happen, okay, under the current legal framework, some country would have to use a crypto asset as its currency. All right. So I always thought that that was the most awkward exchange, but, but Brad Garlinghouse seemed awfully confident and cocky on that stage with that guy. Okay, now let's talk about Susan Athey. Now, this, this lady has always remembered a couple of things. First, you can see that she's you know, Ivy League, she's um, professor of economics, Stanford graduate school business. This is also the woman who put together a, a, um, a paper where she put out a literal model for what she thought at the time or, or a model for how XRP should be valued. And this was back in 2018, I believe. And at the time, she her model showed XRP worth eight, I think it was eight dollars or so, something like that. That was not, but but then somebody turned around. And I didn't pull it up, but you can find it. Type in Susan Athey calculator. Someone, some smart person went, took her um, models and put them into a website, literally, so that you can put in all kinds of different numbers in, and it'll tell you what the valuation of XRP would be under all these different scenarios, volumes running through XRP, all this. You can go do that. It's interesting. But um, so 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 Susan Athey comes on board. Let's see. Uh, let's, let me see what this is. This is when she comes on board, April eighth of two thousand and fourteen. All right, Ripple Labs is proud to welcome noted economist Susan Athey to its board of directors. She's previously an, an advisor to the company. Da da da. She received her bachelor from Duke. She um has held tech teaching positions at MIT, Stanford, Harvard. I mean, she is um and remember. In these these heights of government, all these organizations, whether it's IMF and World Economic Forum, all these different places, 
remember, academians, I mean, that's a part of, of what all these, I mean, that's a part of the identity of all these things, okay? People that are Ivy League high up in academia, um, and, and they're on all the boards and all the this and all of that, and they're the ones that are helping to advise and help these people make decisions. They're, remember, we've said they're all in the club, folks. The Ivy Leaguers, the SEC, the Federal Reserve, the White House, I am up for all these people. They're all in the club. They're in the club that you and I will never be a part of. Okay. I think XRP represents the, the, the little taste that you and I are going to be able to have. And I don't think that this taste happens except for once in four or five generations to get our little taste of, of what these people get to have. Okay. I think this is the one opportunity I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I think it may be the only opportunity in many lifetimes for the average people out here to get their taste. And that's why I do this channel, because I think that's what this represents. Now, back to Susan Athey. She's in the club, folks. She's in the club. So look, look at what Tony um, Valentino sent out when about Susan Athey. He said, this is back in December 2019. He says, Susan Athey attended Bilderberg Group meeting in 2014 alongside Christine Lagarde and other bankers. A few months after that meeting, she joined the Ripple board. This was the year, um, this was the takeover year. She knows banks have no choice, and that's why they are hungry for some Ripple tech and XRP. The only thing I think he might be wrong about, the only place I could find Susan Athey and Bilderberg was 2013 Bilderberg. This is the 2013 Bilderberg uh, conference, and there she is right there as the list of attendees right there. And I'm going to go through and show you some other names that might ring a bell in that list as well. But first, let's listen to what Susan, Susan Athey has to say. Institutions that on the one hand, yes, they're conservative and they're slow. On the other hand, there's actually a lot of pressure often from very high levels, board CEOs, and so on to say, well, we need to know this space. We need to be doing something. So actually, you can get, in some sense, acceleration of certain projects because people feel that they want to do something. Now, doing something could be not something sensible, or it could be a science project that you know gets shut down later. But on the other hand, if they do do something that actually does work, it can get a lot of visibility and, and quick resources. And actually, I guess what I've seen is a lot of hunger um, for finding some, some way to get involved in the space from, from banks, from central banks. Um, Ripple ran a central bank conference that brought in central bankers from all around the world. I spoke at that um, last year, and you know there was there was an incredible level of education and interest and excitement. Uh, you know, multiple central banks have done pilots. Ripple's done them with Bank of England and Saudi Arabia Central Bank. There's, there's, uh, so, so I think there's a level of, uh, there's an elevated level of interest um, that at least gives you, instead of just being sort of something that people are afraid of and it's relegated to like a back room, if you can do something interesting, it can also get elevated. And I think it's been an amazing success case that, you know, Ripple has more than 100 banks signed up. Um, they have, you know, 70 with active commercial deployments in various stages. And then along this path, um, some of the ones like MoneyGram and Western Union are really interested in the crypto aspect of it. So the, the blockchain solution is the one that's adopted by more banks. And so that's basically becoming a competitor to SWIFT in their regions of the world where you know, a lot of banks are joining in, like the Saudi Arabia Central Bank is is doing a trial right now. So I think that's like super exciting. Um, it's maybe a little slower than we might have thought to bring the digital asset into it. But if you think about it, you know, this is a very long process. The banks have to get regulatory approval. They need to work with their lawyers. They need to make sure everybody's on board. They need partners. Okay. So I think she lays it out pretty well for you what, what's going on here, folks. Now, um, so so back to this, though, Susan Athey attended the Bilderberg Group. Now, I think it was two, that the 2013 is the only place I saw her name on it. But um, a few months after that meeting, she joined Ripple Board. There was this was the takeover year. She knows banks have no choice. All right. So let's get past that. Let's look. Let's look. Let's just look. Take a look at this Bilderberg. Some of the participants that um, that 
go to these are these are just different uh, countries. The King of Belgium, uh, United Kingdom, Prince Charles goes to this. Uh, the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> The, the the people in this list is just I mean it, it'll blow you away if you just look just go down the list. They are the who's who of the world as far as royalty. They're the who's who as far as CEOs of of the banks and the everybody who has any power and money is somewhere in this Bilderberg group. What is the Bilderberg group? It is a secretive group. It's always been a, a very secretive group of people who go and meet. Um, I can't remember. Let's see where if it says where they meet. Um, Bilderberg groups organized. Um, that's just the list of them. Here, let me go to Bilderberg. Um, it's an annual conference established in 1954 to foster dialogue between Europe and North America. The group's agenda, agenda or originally to prevent another world war. One thing I've told you on this channel before is that I believe that XRP and Ripple are the part of the whole thing is to prevent world war. And what I mean by that is that by this, and I believe that a part of this global reset, it has to be. The, the debts of the world is, is such a problem. That's the type of thing that could trigger a world war. And that's why I said yesterday that solving the debt problem in conjunction with all this, it makes so much sense that it would be a part of the plan, but it's the only thing I'm questionable about. But back to this, Bilderberg group, right? So these guys all get together and they, they're they the most powerful people in the world. And they, they don't really talk about what they talked about. It never really leaks out. It's the most secretive thing. Now, I decided we would come and look at the steering committee. This is the Bilderberg Group's website. Steering committee for the Bilderberg Group. Let's take a look at some of the people and see if you recognize any names. These are the people running the world. Well, there's the chairman, Goldman Sachs International, former president, European Commission. Oh, look look who we have here. Anna Boten, group executive chair, Banco Santander. Isn't she the same woman I showed you in a video that said that they are using they are a Ripple customer and using Ripple products? Yes, she is. Oh, look, the president of the World Economic Forum. That's the same World Economic Forum that put out their central banker digital currency toolkit and said that XRP and JP Morgan coin would be bridge as or interbank or intrabank currencies, right? That's the same economic uh, World Economic Forum that said that. Now let's keep going down this list and see if we see anybody else that might be a little uh, interesting. Um, oh, there's one. That's Eric Schmidt, former CEO and chairman of Google. Google Ventures is an investor in Ripple. And then we have one more here that I think is worthy of mentioning. Peter Thiel, president and the, one of the founders of PayPal and also an investor in Ripple. There you go, folks. Now, I want to show you one last thing. And if any of you have been who have been around um, for any period of time here, you know this whole space is literally almost like a war. It's a Bitcoin XRP war. And the Bitcoin people are terrified. that They know that Bitcoin is only a store of value and, and only if they're successful in the marketing of Bitcoin as a store of value. They know this. They know the technology is already a dinosaur. They also know the powers that have have that are involved with XRP. This is why they're terrified of it. Now, I will tell you um, it, from it, it, where all this arises. The people that are Bitcoin maxis, they believe they're most of them. It's like a libertarian movement now, and and Ron Paul is a libertarian as well. It's like a libertarian movement now. Here's the irony of all of this. I am am pretty libertarian myself. I mean, I, I I I I am I came out of the financial crisis as as angry at, at governments of the world as anyone, folks. Trust me on that. But I have never been naive enough to believe that we're going to all be for Bitcoin and and it's going to take down the financial system. We're going to have a revolution. No, I'm 46 years old, folks. No, not happening. Okay, like Brad Garlinghouse said, they'll bring out the tanks before that happens. But what if the government was all involved from the get-go, folks? What if the government was involved? And what if those of us that were paying attention had a chance to get, you know, what, you know what freedom is? You know what real freedom is? 
get rich, get wealthy. You want to be free? You want your family to be free? Be a part of something that changes the world and get mega wealthy. I want a revolution in my wallet. And I've said it from day one. Um, you're not, I don't care what any, I don't, especially you young people, you're not getting rid of the governments of the world. You're not going to have a revolution that overthrows the governments. You will be put in jail before that happens. And at 46, I'm not interested in being a part of a revolution. I'm interested in a revolution in my wallet so that I can take care of my family and maybe give them a 10,000 times better life than I had. That to me is doing right by my children, not thinking I'm going to have some revolution and do something that's never been done in the history of the world, which is to overthrow the world government. Forget it. So this, I want you to listen closely to what this guy is, is asking Ron Paul about, and, and I don't see this in a bad context. Ron Paul is, it, it's easy for Ron Paul to be a libertarian and, and, and say, I, w I want to be anti-government and, and, and freedom and all this stuff. But Ron Paul's already wealthy. You know, he's been wealthy, so he has freedom. He can fight for it for everyone else. But listen to what he says. Did you hear about that recent uh, Bilderberg Group meeting in, uh, what was it, uh, Shantyville, Virginia? Yeah, recently there was one, and there was some reports on it. I didn't read a whole lot about it, but Man. they certainly were there. What do you think they're doing there? <laughs> Seriously, what do you think they're doing there? Well, they probably get together and... Uh, well, they probably get together and talk about how they are going to control the banking systems of the world and natural resources. Well, folks, I'm sorry. Look, I love what Ron Paul stands where I love the libertarian thing. I do. But I also live in the real world. OK, and, and I know that a lot of people think Bilderberg and all that's conspiratorial. But the bottom line is there are people who control the world and there are always going to be people who control the world. Your best shot. At, at, at achieving any kind of freedom close to what those people that control the world have is getting wealthy yourself. And I believe XRP is that chance. I believe it's a once in four or five lifetimes chance. It may be a once in the entire history of the world financial world chance. Okay. But this, there's no doubt that he's right that they're doing this, but it's a, it's one of those things. Are you going to be a part of it? Are you going to sit on the sidelines and be angry at the government for the rest of your life? Talk about how they're going to uh, control the banking systems of the world and uh, natural resources. And we get together and we talk about how we're going to get our freedom back. So, uh, we have our now look, I've known a lot of people in my life and I've known a lot of wealthy people in my life. Um, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, the people who have the most freedom that I know, are the wealthiest people that I know. These are the people who go to shoot birds in Argentina and they go on vacation while I'm sitting at home working. These are the people of the world who are free. You want freedom? Get wealthy. You want an opportunity for that? In my opinion, XRP is the one. It's the greatest digital asset ever created. We are at a, a place in time that will not be repeated and has never been repeated in the history of the world, in my opinion. Now, I want to show you this to further drive the point home about Ripple. This guy, this is from SPQR Media. This is the their last video that they did, and they highlighted a guy who, who in 2014 was appointed to the um, Ripple Advisory Board. Look, this is Christine Lagarde beside the guy. This is him right here, and this is Bill Clinton, and beside. Bill Clinton's probably got his hands on the guy's wife. I think that's the guy's wife, but um, Bill Clinton right beside him. Uh, and this is the guy that this is in reference to, Carl Theodore Zu Gutenberg. And SPQR Media, they're the ones that uncovered all this. Joins Ripple Labs, Labs Advisory Board. Well, who is this guy? Um, let's go all the way down to here, show you who this guy is. Family and personal life. He's a member of the House of Gutenberg, first documented in 1158 and conferred, conferred the rank of baron by the Holy Roman Emperor in 1700. Since the adoption of Germany's 1919 Weimar Constitution, which abolished the nobility's privileges, noble titles from part, part of the name of the only. Now, this is his wife. You tell me these people aren't connected. His wife's, um, she is a von Bismarck, a great, uh, 
a great 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 granddaughter of the first chancellor of Germany, Otto von Bismarck. Okay, you see where this goes, folks. These are this is in, this is a start. Remember, this is a startup in 2000. When did this guy get on board? So they get a lady who has been to the Bilderberg meeting. Then they get this guy who's from the freaking house of whatever, house of Gutenberg. And he's married to the great, great granddaughter of, of the first chancellor of Germany. Do you see all this, this forming up folks? I mean, come on. Does my, does my son, my seven year old need to draw you a picture of Otto von Bismarck? Is that what we have to do here? He would be really mad at me if I asked him to draw a picture because this would be one where he said, that's hard, daddy. Um, okay. And finally, I'm going to finish it here. XRP Harvester said this on May 31st of 2019. It's hard to turn your head when you know the White House, Federal Reserve, IMF, central banks are currently involved with Ripple. XRP will solve the liquidity crisis not only in this country, but worldwide. Let me see what this was. I wanted to show you this just to finish this video. Um, look at this all over London bus shelters and same uh, London double decker buses too. look closely at the small print F Frederick Belay um, ANDSC in 30 minutes transfer go runs on ripple and then there's this uh, he's taking a picture of himself in front of it. runs on ripple and I'm seeing this more and more and there's a, there, it's also on a bus here runs on ripple there you go folks. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that there are two, two investors that I know of. No, I take that back. There's three investors. Santander, the, the uh, chairman or CEO of Santander, um, the, the uh, Eric Schmidt that founded Google, Google Ventures invests in Ripple. And Peter Thiel, the founder, one of the founders of PayPal is an investor of Ripple. There are three investors in Ripple that are on the steering committee for the Bilderberg Group, which, which is probably the most powerful group in the world that's connected from a power standpoint, as well as finance and the money of the world. Thank you for listening.